Hello and welcome to the second video in our series on inner site managed mode. In this video we're going to look at creating a domain profile and applying it to a pair of fabric interconnects that we have previously claimed. If you have not yet seen the video on claiming the fabric interconnects, please look for that video which was the first in this series. Let's pause for a moment and talk about just what these domain profiles are. Domain profiles are a new concept introduced with InterSite Managed Mode. They allow you to define the physical and operational configurations for fabric interconnects, including port definitions, vSANs, VLAN, port channels, and other operational settings. Just like service profiles do for servers, Domain profiles allow you to build verifiable, repeatable, predefined configurations for your UCS domains. Let's go try this new concept out. Here you can see we have our previously claimed device. We have a Fabric Interconnect pair, which is in the claim state, and we're going to go and create the domain profile for it. One thing of note, I'm logged in as an account administrator so that I have the appropriate permissions to both create a domain profile and apply it to the hardware. Before we actually create the domain profile, we're gonna do a little bit of organizational work. We're using a role-based access control in this environment. So what we want to do is add this device into the organization where we plan to manage it. So I'll go to the organization's management area. I will find my organization, edit that, locate my new device, do a quick filter for it, it's the easiest way. And then by selecting that device, it will be added to that organization. We'll touch on that again while we're creating the domain profile. Creating a domain profile consists of basic naming, optionally assigning the domain profile to the hardware, configuring the ports as defined by the physical connectivity to servers, uplinks, and storage, and finally defining a set of policies for the runtime parameters. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we do is both name and choose the organization that our domain profile is going to be in if we're using role-based access control. We are using that here with our hardware, so I will select the correct organization. The hardware was already placed into that organization earlier. And so now I'll select the Fabric interconnects that are going to be assigned at this point. You can optionally create your domain profile ahead of time and assign it to the Fabric interconnects later. As noted earlier, the first step is to configure the port definitions according to the physical connectivity. So I'll start with the first Fabric interconnect. I'm going to create a new policy, again naming it with our standard convention. Now step one is configuring unified ports. To do that, we'll move the slider over for the number of ports that are using fiber channel connectivity. Now that we have our unified ports configured, which you can confirm here by noticing that those ports have been changed over to fiber channel, we'll select the port roles for the remaining ports. In this uh, particular hardware setup, we have two sets of server ports on the first set of four over here. And notice you can select them in the port list or you can select them interactively on the graphic. Either way works just fine. Once we've selected the ports, we'll click the configure button and we're gonna change these ports from unconfigured and mark them as server. We're gonna leave the FEC mode set at auto that primarily is going to impact links that are at 25 gig. Now, before we move on, we'll continue configuring any other remaining ports that we have. So I'll configure my port channels. So in this case, I'll click create port channel, and then I will select my ports just as before. And I will define my port channel ID for this one. And notice it's set as an Ethernet uplink port channel, which is what I'm looking for. And the speed is auto, so that's enough for that one. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, define my port channel for my fiber channel links going to the storage array. First, I need to define that as a fiber channel uplink port channel. 
then since these will be different, I'll have different vSANs between the A side and the B side, I will actually be creating two separate port policies. If I did not have vSANs, then I would be free to use the same port policy for both the A and the B fabric interconnects. So let me save that fiber channel port channel. And now I've got the port channels configured. I've got my server ports configured. So I can save my port policy and move on to the second fabric interconnect. Moving now down to fabric interconnect B, we'll again create a new policy, give it our name, move the slider to define the fiber channel ports, set up our server ports. Go over to the port channel configuration. First, creating our uplink port channel. And finally, creating our fiber channel uplink to our storage. We'll save that. And now we can see we've successfully com completed the logical definition for our port configuration. This brings us to setting up the rest of our operational policies. As you can see, for each fabric interconnect, we'll be defining a VLAN and a vSAN configuration. So I'll start with uh, fabric interconnect A, creating a new policy. And in this case, I, have, I will have the same VLANs on both fabrics, so I can actually just use a single policy. And my VLAN is going to be my native VLAN. This is a pretty simple configuration here. And so now I'm going to go, just go ahead and copy that down onto the B side, but my vSANs will be independent. So creating one for the A side. Creating that. And then doing the same for the B side. Finishing that, and we have our vSAN and VLAN configuration complete. And now we'll move on to our final set of policies that need configuring, starting with NTP. This is for our fabric interconnects themselves to obtain time service. And as long as we have DNS defined, which is required, we can use the host name. We can set the time zone as well. Network connectivity is where we define the DNS servers. This is a very important policy. Even if you defined DNS servers when you initially configured the fabric interconnects, this is required. Otherwise, when the fabric interconnects are rebooted to configure the universal ports, they will not come back with DNS and will experience an outage. And that's good, been going to be good enough for our configuration. And since we have fiber channel, we are going to set a QoS policy. And the default QoS policy has fiber channel and a second class of everything else, and that's going to work for us. So we'll save that. We've got all our policies set. Uh, we're going to move on. We'll view the summary. That allows us to view the port configurations.
for the A and the B fabric. We can co go back, we can review our VLAN vSAN configuration, the domain configurations, and then we can check for any errors or warnings. At this point, we can just close the domain policy and save it as it is, or we can go ahead and deploy it to our fabric interconnects. I'm going to go ahead and click on deploy, allow that to take action. I can see that uh, I have a couple of tasks started, one for the A fabric and one for the B fabric, and I'll follow those as they proceed along. All right, I've waited for my tasks to complete, so I can come over and I can bring one of them up. And I can see I successfully made it through the validation and deployment phases. So let's go take a look at our Fabric Interconnects. I'll just start with the A Fabric Interconnect. And I'll be able to see the general information related to the Fabric Interconnect, firmware version, IP addresses, etc. We can go and check the inventory. Uh, that allows us to check the internal components like fan modules, power supplies, and storage. Uh, but most important to us is the connections that are available. It's going to default to the servers. And as we can see, it has discovered the eight servers in the chassis. And if we'd like, we can examine the chassis itself. And that allows us to drill down. We can see the visual depiction of the chassis and the blades that are found in it. I want to thank you for watching this video on InterSite Managed Mode Domain Profiles and encourage you to follow on with the next video in the series on InterSite Managed Mode Service Profiles.